Hello, my name is Neve, and I'm an Environmental Management and Sustainable Development student at Murdoch University. I'm completing my work experience here at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Land Care, and today I'll be talking to you about the importance of salt marshes. Salt marshes, which are also called tidal marshes, are an area along rivers, coasts and estuaries which floods and drains by the tidal movement of the adjacent water body. It is characterised by its plant species, which tend to be dense in appearance and play a significant role in the trapping and binding of sediment. Western Australia has the largest area of coastal salt marshes in the country. While there are salt marshes in the north half of Western Australia, the largest areas are in the south of the state. We will focus on these areas. Those in the Swan Coastal Plain biogeographic region, which includes Perth and surrounding areas, occur around the Swan, Peel Harvey, Leshenol and Vasswanarup estuaries. Here you can see the areas along the Swan River where salt marshes are located, including the ones located in the Canning River Regional Park, which are subjected to the tidal influences of the Canning River estuary. Also pictured are the salt marshes of the Mandra area that are part of the Peel Harvey estuary system. In Bunbury, the salt marshes are connected to the Leshenol Inlet, which is considered the best in the state for salt marshes and hosts a variety of salt marsh communities. The salt marshes which stretch along the Bosserton area are part of the vast water up wetland system, which is considered of international importance. Augusta salt marshes run along the estuaries between Augusta and Denmark. Mapping of salt marsh areas of the Swan Coastal Plain has been completed to some extent, but much of it is not readily available, is incomplete, not amalgamated, or standardised, which makes comparing data on occurrence and loss of salt marsh difficult. Salt marshes are blue carbon sinks. Carbon sinks are any area which stores more carbon than it releases. Blue carbon is carbon captured within ocean and coastal environments. Salt marshes are one such environment. The plants within this ecosystem are salt tolerant species called halophytes. The plant takes in carbon dioxide during the process of photosynthesis. Some of it is turned into sugars that becomes the leaves, stems and roots of the plants, while the rest is lost back to the atmosphere through respiration. The carbon stored within the plant is retained in the soil when the plant dies or loses leaves or other materials. As this soil is frequently covered in saline water, it is very oxygen poor, and therefore the breakdown of plant materials occurs very slowly, resulting in the significant carbon storage. Other blue carbon examples are seagrass meadows and mangroves. Salt marshes are believed to be one of the Earth's most efficient carbon sinks and can store up to 55 times the carbon of tropical rainforests. They can also store their carbon in the soil for thousands of years if left undisturbed. In the past, many considered salt marshes to be wastelands, and this resulted in many of them being drained, reclaimed and otherwise degraded. And as such, they are now listed as threatened ecological communities. We now know that salt marshes provide many important ecosystem services. As explained in the previous slide, salt marshes store carbon, and if these areas are not well maintained, it can result in large amounts of carbon being emitted into the atmosphere, which results in climate change. As seen in the graph, Western Australia has the third highest carbon storage. Salt marshes also help maintain water quality by acting as a filter for nutrients and contaminants and sediments, and they protect our coastlines and riverbanks from erosion by absorbing the wind and wave energy from storm surge and rising sea levels. Salt marshes can be home to a variety of animals, from the smaller macroinvertebrates feeding on the sediment and decomposing salt marsh material, which in turn provides food for the larger invertebrates and water birds. The vegetation that grows in salt marshes has adapted to the harsh conditions such as changing salinity and low levels of oxygen in the soil. Halophytes are salt tolerant plants such as succulents, sedges, grasses and algae that grow in soil or waters of high salinity. Like salt marshes, and come into contact with saline water either by their roots or by salt spray. These plants are essential for the stability of the salt marsh and allow it to trap and bind sediments. A variety of threats impacts the health and success of salt marshes. There are ecological threats such as invasive weed species which can harm salt marsh vegetation. A common weed found in salt marsh areas is Passel palm vegetalum, also known as weedy saltwater couch. This species is known for its ability to form dense mats which affects the abundance and growth of salt marsh species and the structure, production and nutrient dynamics of salt marshes. 
there are an increasing amount of human-induced threats, one being the overloading of nutrients, a process also known as eutrophication, which has been linked to a reduction in carbon accumulation and salt marsh biomass. Urbanisation and development in and around salt marsh areas for urban or industrial use can affect the natural tidal movements between the salt marsh and water systems. Other forms of degradation are unapproved tracks being made or people driving through salt marsh areas. An issue with vehicle tracks in these areas is that it creates small puddles, which results in breeding grounds for mosquitoes. This can lead to the chemical pest control, the negative effects of which affects the production of salt marshes and their ability to store carbon. As individuals, we can help prevent the loss of salt marshes, especially by watching how we may contribute to increased nutrient pollution. By avoiding the overuse of fertilizers, which can enter drains and water systems through runoff, as well as avoiding using detergents to wash your car. Not feeding birds items such as bread and making sure you dispose of grass clippings, leaves and dog poo correctly. Lastly, raising awareness by talking to your friends and family, as well as visiting one of the many salt marshes in Western Australia, such as the ones in the Canning River Regional Park, to familiarise yourself with these areas and experience their beauty and importance firsthand. The key points to remember are that there are many salt marshes across Western Australia. Salt marshes are carbon sinks and help with climate mitigation. Salt marshes also help maintain water quality and the aquatic environments around them. They also play an important role in the local food web. There are a variety of ecological and human threats, but we can help protect and maintain these important areas. On behalf of Circle, thank you for watching, and if you would like any further information on any of the programs Circle has to offer, please visit the website, which will be linked down below.